And in today's video, let's unbox Xperia Pro 1. Oh. Charger inside, which is great. Oh, that's a pretty big smartphone with a huge one inch camera. It feels very nice in the hand. USB Type C and a microphone. Two buttons for the regular camera and the pro camera. Power button, volume button, microphone, headphone jack, SIM card tray. Okay. Okay, let me. Okay, I'm filming with Samsung, which is terrible. Wow, what a huge camera. This is a one inch lens, a similar lens you can find in Sony compact cameras. SIM card tray. And you can remove the SIM card tray with your finger. You don't need to have a tool. It's quite fast and easy compared to any regular smartphone. I like it. Let's power it on. Download the update. It needs to be up to date. Can you hear it? The louder it is, the better video stability it will have. 120 hertz smooth experience. Very smooth. Wow. Games. Those are not pre-installed games. I just in, I just installed them. It is very smooth. I already I already made a couple of pictures. You can literally change everything, even the screen colors. Those are even the manual settings, custom settings. You can the customization is on the next level. Video. This is a 4K screen. You can watch 4K video on it with native resolution. This is not the loudest smartphone in the world, but maybe the cleanest sounding smartphone in the world. It could be. Beautiful sounding speakers. Benchmarks. And it's not too much. 899. Well, maybe because my unit is faulty and it's probably thermal tro throttling, so... Built-in memory. 940 to 736, which is a flagship territory, but the SD card reader is very slow, 36 to 31. We have a dedicated game enchant, so you can record screen 
and the camera at the same time, game, game performance, multitasking, all kinds of funny stuff. You can also use your uh, headset as a microphone. Sony experience. Okay, let me let me use the Xbox pad and let's see how smooth this will be. It's smooth. Nice. Bear in mind, this is a very demanding game, but still, in this price range, this should be a smooth experience, but it isn't. Maybe because of that 4K screen. It could be. Most of the smartphones has the full HD screens. Maybe 2K screens, but this is 4K. So, very demanding on the processor. Got camera we have three different apps regular one cinema pro and video pro this smartphone simulate professional cameras so the amount of options we have is literally insane and i'm not going to talk about it, about every one of them because this video will be like two hours you wish you could do anything like in a professional camera raw jpeg autofocus all kinds of different features. Let's stay with the basic. Okay, the maximum resolution for the photos is 12 megapixels. Mm, it should be somewhere. You can, of course, uh, set your image to a SD card, which is very cool. Especially when you just remove your SD card with a finger. Just like that. Let me just show it to you. See, you don't have to have a tool. How cool is that? Okay. Oh my god. It's getting crazy. What's 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 going on? Why it's so crazy? Anyway. Too many buttons all over the place and uh, they just Oh my god, you see? I always hitting that button when, when I'm grabbing the phone. It's just quite annoying. You can change your let me just show it to you. You see, you can change it if you want to. That's a, that's some features. Cinema Pro, mainly for a video. Here you can change. First, you have to create a new profile. Why well, it's upside down? You can all you can go all the way to 4K, 120 frames per second. Oh my God! Come on! Come on! There's also a video pro, which I think it's a bit easier than, than the cinema pro. And like you can see, it started to overheat and I didn't even start the recording. I think my unit is faulty and all I need to do is turn on the app and it will overheat itself. So it must be a faulty unit. You see, it's overheating already after like one minute. Manual focus, autofocus. All the way to 120 frames per second. Video stabilization. Okay. Video light, slow motion. Pretty cool. But it is overheating itself after just one minute. Shorter ISO. It's not that complicated. Like I said, it is overheating. And when it's overheating, it will limit a screen to a 60 hertz. So let me show you some pictures and videos. Bear in mind, there will be a link in the description for you to download the original samples. It has autofocus and wide angle, which is very, very impressive. This is on the regular app. You can zoom. Wow. You can play around with the audio output all the way to 10, it is too loud. Uh, I think 7 is okay. Front facing camera only full HD. 
and no autofocus, which is quite bizarre. Focus, speed. In a video pro, you can go all the way to 120 bit range, which is quite a lot in a smartphone. Or you can choose 60. Do you see any difference? Let me know in a comment below. In Cinema Pro, you have that feeling that you're watching a movie. It's quite cool. Sony doesn't have too many megapixels. This is only 9 megapixels in 16 by 9. This is from the main lens. Wow. Very impressive. Wide angle. 9 megapixels. I know when you... You, when you zoom in, of course, there will be a lot of pixels to show, but wow, nine, not a hundred, not two hundred, just nine. And with the telephoto lens, check out the roof. The amount of details is incredible. You can go 12 megapixel with a 4x3 uh, shot. Also a beautiful shot. Like, like I said, a link in the description for you to download the original samples. Hey, this is not the brightest camera in the world, especially with the poor light condition. This is not a poor light condition, but it's not the brightest camera, like I, like I said. So with the iPhone or Samsung, you will have a brighter image because they have like, I, I think Samsung is 1.4 light which is much better i mean it will gather more light i don't know if it's better or not let me know in the comment below but all those pictures are beautiful but quality wise but like i said not too bright in the low light conditions mm, i'm not sure about this one a bit too dark. And bear in mind, all those photos are in auto mode. I didn't use manual because yeah, I just wanted to show how the smartphone is hand handle it. Hand handling all those uh, different scenarios. But it's handling pretty good. I mean, really good. Really really good check out this check out that that car this is i it didn't move this is from the wide angle main lens and telephoto the amount of details is incredible w without me moving okay it will oversaturate a red just a tiny bit Compared to the, any other smartphone, it's just a tiny bit. This is wide angle and more natural color in wide angle. You can see that paprika is not that red. Bokeh effect, also. Very nice. Red Bull. Fanta, so you could recognize the colors. And Mercy. And of course, like, like you can see, like I said, it's not the brightest camera. Uh, yesterday I was shooting with something like half a, half the price and the photo was a, a bit brighter. So, yeah. Of course you can correct that in the post-production. Yeah. It definitely, it definitely needs more light to it. And a selfie. Yep. All right. So let's move on. It reminds me of a professional camera, but there's a downside to it. If you're not a professional, if you're not, if you just want to make some quick pictures, 
Like other brands like iPhone, Samsung will help you to make that beautiful picture with a software, with the AI, which will correct every your mis every mistake you, you make during the uh, during the picture. Yeah? This one is not that forgiving. You you have to learn your craft because it's for the professionals. And I think that's all I have. A fantastic device. But you have to know what you're doing. <laughs> it is not a point and shoot camera. It is a professional camera. Professional smartphone. And that's all I have. Thanks for watching and see you next video. Bye.